Welcome back. Nagal and advisor for information and public relations, soil and water Converse conservation, Im Kong L. Im Chen, on Tuesday called a press conference and issued a rejoinder to the NSC and IM's reaction about a statement he made at the table tennis tournament in Mokokchung last week, where he expressed pessimism about the ongoing talk in the relation to the Naga political issue. Im Chen, after giving a gist about his experience during the Naga struggle, said that as people's representative since 2003, he is concerned about the opinion of the general public and that he feels there is nothing wrong about expressing the people's desire through his mouth. The name is Yim Kong L. M. Chen, 74 years old, son of late Dongri Samuel M. Chen, born 15 June 1950. Graduated from Koima College and post graduation in New Shillong. If I post down to my memory, memory land, I freshly remember my village Mamatong going to our respective Chamlet farm in 1955, being chased out by the Assam police. Again in 1956, we came back to our village only to be grouped with Lungkong village, that is a village grouping, in 1957. However, my father decided that our family will not go to Lungkong. Instead, we went to Chungkong and established our game there. When our game was attacked by the Indian army, we were saved by the mighty hand of God. After that, in 1958, my father and my elder brother Step back in the jungle, and my mother took us to Longkam village. Even though we were there, we were kept in a separate concentration camp within Longkam village. Only in later part of 1958, we were sent back to the Mamado village. During 1957 and 58, my village, Mamadong, was turned into a hot battle zone between the Indian uh, Naga Army and the Naga, uh, Indian Army. Such incidents are still afresh in my mind till today. And it shall always be linger in my mind till I go down to the grave. My father was always uh, uh, exhibited the uh, counterfoil of uh, 1951 NNC plebiscite being the village volunteer and later on, he was appointed as the treasurer of Ombongong Range Polanders and a staunch supporter of Ezat Bizu and M. Kongbaran, leadership of NNC, and never compromised for the flame of Naga nationalism for its independence, even though he is no more today. In 1951, the plebiscite was started from my village, Mamadong, within the whole country. With all these afresh memories, I was roaming on the street of Nagaland, and the infamous uh, Shilong Accord came about in 1975, followed by the by, by its annexure. We were so agitated in a crib, suffocating ourselves about the tragedy committed by our leader, no, by our own Naga leaders. Somewhere in 1978, we came across a joint statement, joint leader, issued by Sri Isakji Shiso and Vice, uh, Vice President NNC, and Sri Teach Moiva, General Secretary NNC from Lhasa. Later on, they established the NSC and by issuing its manifesto, manifested their own vision for the Nagas. I was personally and psychologically relieved so much that we the Nagas have a hope. The ceasefire agreement between the government of India and the NSN was uh, entered in 1997. Later on, political talks between the two in Delhi started in, 2000, uh, started in 2015. The framework agreement between the government of India and the innocent iron was signed to the delight of the Naga people. 
Now, after signing the framework agreement, it is uh, now um, uh, about eight years, and yet no satisfactory message is coming out of the Naga people's uh, out to the Naga people as a whole till date. The people of Nagaland are demanding that the Naga political issue should be come to should come to a reasonable conclusion. As a people's representative since 2003, and Nagaland Legislative Assembly, I am also alive and concerned about the opinion expressed by the general Naga public. It is feel imperative on my part to reflect the Naga public opinion in public to me. I feel nothing wrong for openly expressing their opinion through my mouth. I am fully aware of the intellectual and concerned city sections as well as the general public of Nagaland are also having the same opinion but restraining themselves out of the fear of Khan culture prevailing in this state. Yes, I do admit that I have shifted political parties from MPF to NDPP to PGP, owing to the demand of my people, and therefore I feel nothing wrong in it. I am also aware that the innocent IM was not in support of my candidature from Tundet Kuridang Assembly Constituency during the last several elections. for which I have no complaint, since the reason best known to them to go against me in my election. I wonder as to why the innocent I am is so much against my joining the BGB party in 2023. In fact, I resigned from the membership of the 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly on January 2023. Let the innocent I am go against the PGB, which will not affect my mind to review my decision of joining PGB. As a matter of fact, it is the PGB party who has uh, taken the bold decision to sign the framework agreement under the leadership of Sri Narendra Modi ji, the Prime Minister of India, and Sri Rajnath Singh ji as the Home Minister and Sri Arun Ravi as the governor of Nagal, as a as an interlocutor of the government of India. I have stated that innocent I am on numerous numerous uh, occasions expressed their complaint in public to me about the attitude towards the government of India. However, the government of India has not stated any negative opinion in regard to the framework agreement. And therefore, I reaffirm my statement of Mokok Chong on 23rd October 23 as to why such complaints should come in public domain while they themselves are officially engaged in this sensitive talk. The Naga political issue is a, is a common Naga agenda, passed in 1951 plebiscite under the leadership of A.Z. Bezo which is officially taken cognizant even by the government of India. Some of the Naga tribes may not have taken part in the Naga plebiscite in 1951, and yet Nagas have struggled together under the plebiscite slogan. The darkest moment of the Naga political history can be considered from 1955 to 1963. This cannot be just wished away by any individual or organization but should be accepted as a factual of Naga political structure. Therefore, Nagas, of the real, Nagas are the real stakeholders, including the 60 MLS of Nagaland Legislative Assembly and also the government servants, along with the Naga public in general. Besides, the several resolutions passed in the Nagaland Legislative Assembly under the leadership of different chief ministers. It is not an individual own property. But of the Nagas, the sacrifices of Naga people are still fresh in the mind of the Naga people. I have come across the darkest period of period from 1955 to 63 
and beyond till death. I feel nothing wrong expressing my opinion about Nagar political issue as expressed as express by many of my colleagues, ministers, legislators, it is legislators, okay, etc., in different capacities on different occasions. Above all, the Naga public intellectual and concerned citizens have been expressing through various uh, medias and different platforms about, uh, about their anxieties and also the conduct of the Naga political uh, uh, negotiation. In this way, I comment my statement to the wisdom of the Naga, Naga as a whole. I am not interested to conduct uh, a running argument in this regard with anybody or organization, though I don't restrain, restrain them from if expressing their opinion in any platform.